No, what? How? What? Oh my god! <laughs> James Gunn, you've taken the one thing I asked for this Christmas, a Batman Beyond movie, and now that that's gone, there's only one thing left for me to do. I'm going to steal your Christmas, James Gunn, if I can't be happy this holiday season. Neither will you. Hello, my who's out there in Whoville. My name is the Grinch of this side flick. I went British there for a second. And I'll definitely explain why I look like this here in a second, but we've got some movie news to discuss here today, guys. Oh, we got updates galore on the DC situation, clarifying what movies look to be canceled if the DC universe is being rebooted, including discussions about a Batman Beyond movie that's no longer happening. We got Jackie Chan talking about a Rush Hour 4, looking into the brand new clip for the Super Mario movie, that along with so much more, my who's. So please go ahead and not only leave me your opinions down below with all the movie news we discussed here today, hit that like button. Who else on YouTube will dress up like the Grinch and bring you quality movie news? Exactly. Okay, but yes, just to answer your question for now, the reason I'm dressed like this, guys, is because I finally got to watch the Grinch horror movie, The Mean One, and I just thought it'd be kind of fun to actually dress up as the mean one himself while I review that movie, because I got so much to say about that. So diving into our first movie news topic here, we have an update on the Saw franchise, specifically Saw 10. If you've been watching my channel, you know I've been updating you on this movie. We are getting yet another Saw reboot, sequel, prequel, all in one. The fans right now are calling it Saw X, as it would be the 10th Saw film ever made. The only details we have about the movie so far is that Tobin Bell is returning as John Kramer for the main character of this movie. It's rumored to be a sequel, prequel that'll be taking place in between Saw 1 and Saw 2. And now we even have more proof that that rumor seems to be pretty accurate because another fan favorite character just joined the cast. Now, if you're someone who's trucked along with all these 10 Saw movies, you will get excited to hear that Shawnee Smith is reportedly in talks to return to the franchise. For those of you who might not be familiar with the Saw franchise, this is an interesting character that was introduced in the first three movies. Amanda was a unique character because she's essentially the proof that shows John Kramer what he's doing actually works. And that that is the whole reason he does his traps is because he thinks if you put a bad person in a life and death situation where they have to fight for their own life on the other end of that tunnel they'll come out a better person and if they don't they die a bad person. Amanda was seen surviving her trap of the reverse bear trap and then ended up becoming an apprentice of Jigsaw. However down the line she lost her way ended up becoming not so good and like John Kramer your traps don't work man. 10 movies in. Face it. Now what you wanna do though, is steal Christmas. Just saying. But for Saw 10 bringing her back along Tobin Bell, all right, l let's see what you got. As a diehard fan who's been following the series and likes the stories from the earlier Saw movies, I'm hyped about this. I think this is awesome. But I don't know how this fares with bringing in and new fans of the franchise. Do they really want to see a sequel that's the 10th film, but is actually technically 1.5 in the franchise? You know what I mean? Like, isn't that kind of odd? They just randomly decided to make a movie in between one and two as their 10th film. It's a Saw movie, so I'm going to be there either way. But this makes me excited as a fan of the franchise. Other Saw fans, are you excited to see Amanda possibly returning? And speaking of characters, we're excited to possibly return here. Here, we got news on Rush Hour 4, y'all. I think any person around my age is probably the biggest Rush Hour fan. We grew up with Rush Hour 1 and 2 just playing back to back on TV. And even though Rush Hour 3 was not that great, it has a lot of enjoyable moments in it. And it still has humor that is almost impossible to put in film today. But here Deadline is reporting that during a film festival, Jackie Chan was asked about Rush Hour 4 and he said, we're talking about part four right now. He he told the festival crowd, adding that he's going to meet with film directors this evening to discuss the script. He did not identify said directors, but American filmmaker Brett Ratner directed all three previous versions, and I can bet you Brett Ratner ain't returning for this one. Boy got cancelled, and I didn't. 
and I stole Christmas. It's the one joke I got, guys. I'm gonna keep playing it. And this, to me, actually makes it seem official that we are actually gonna be getting a Rush Hour 4, because for the past five, six years, Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker have both been saying in interviews all over the place, oh, we're gonna make another one. Yeah, we're gonna working on it. We're gonna make it happen. But that was it. And then we never heard anything again. This boy is saying that same day he's gonna meet with people about the script and get a director. This movie's gonna happen! So now let's talk about that. Can Rush Hour 4 actually be as good as the previous movies? At this point, I don't know if I even care about that. We know Jackie Chan might not have it in him to put all those fight moves he used to. I'm sure he's got a lot still left in him. But we do have to admit that times have changed. The world is different. Whenever Rush Hour does play on cable TV, you get a warning. And I remember seeing this when I was at a hotel, out of town, visiting family, and then I was like... Why, why is this warning in front of Rush Hour 2? And you know what? I'd be happy if they push the boundaries and try making some of those jokes that maybe just aren't able to be made today. Am I a sick person for saying I find that stuff funny? It is just jokes, but that is just me talking as the Grinch. So you can't cancel 3C, he's not here. But even if the humor doesn't match the offensiveness of the previous movies, I kind of just want to see these characters interact one more time. That would be a big dream. So Rush Hour 4, bring it on. What do you guys think about Rush Hour 4 and how it could play out in this modern age and with their current age? From there, let's talk about a new video clip that we got during the Game Awards that were last night. Some exclusive content that happened during the Game Awards is we got our first full-length clip for the Super Mario Bros. movie. This is a minute and 30 second clip of Mario and Toad entering the Mushroom Kingdom for the very first time and... I'm just gonna say guys, I know it is like maybe a jinx or I shouldn't say it. This is the standard for video game movies now. I cannot get over how beautiful this film looks, the cinematography, the animation, but now also the music, literally keynotes taken from video games and then implemented into the movie so seamlessly where it doesn't feel like cheap nostalgia. Then you have like the thousand Easter eggs per frame where things in the background or things happening literally right in front of you can sort of trigger the mind for so many fans who have played different Mario games over the years. And even some funny things I want to talk about with this clip that the Grinch caught because he is a thief himself. As you can clearly see, this handsome boy in green, great color on him by the way, drops his coins, Mario picks it up, and then hands it to the man in red. I hate the man in red. He is my enemy, and now that guy. It's my enemy. And I even really like the humor going on here. We were so afraid of pop culture references or lowbrow humor of like poop jokes. Here you have Toad just basically yelling at people that Mario's brother is gonna die. And look at the angry face this Brooklyn boy has. You know Mario in that split second in his mind was thinking, Oh, why I oughta, you f boy, that's my brother. I'ma let it slide because you're helping me get with the princess boy, but don't let it slip again. Yo, Brooklyn out. The Grinch also does impressions. Not very good ones, but he does them. And we also gotta talk about the little clip that we get of Chris Pratt's Brooklyn accent here. Okay, so these bricks are just floating here. Uh, okay, so these bricks are just floating here. Uh. I don't even know why I'm talking about it because I don't even care about the voices anymore. I just want this freaking movie, man. How did you guys feel about this clip for the Super Mario movie? Are you seeing how beautifully amazing it is? Are you thinking, just wait to watch the film, dude. Sonic 2 is still the best. Now bringing it over here to finally talk about some updates with the DC Universe because man, things are just non-stop interesting in the DC world. So you guys might have seen this week I made a video where a big article came out that Wonder Woman 3 was looking to be cancelled, Man of Steel 2 is now no longer happening, Black Adam 2 doesn't look like it'll happen either, and maybe James Gunn and Peter Safran were planning to just reboot the DCU entirely. Even in that same video I mentioned this is a developing story, we're gonna hear so many different sides and more correct correct information as the days come and now we got more correct information and we're still just a sod. For one, Deadline here came out with their own sources to clarify some things that were happening behind the scenes at the DC studio. So starting off with Wonder Woman 3, yes, as of right now, it looks like that movie is canceled, is not happening. Even going further to confirm that the details we got about them not being happy with the story and idea Patty Jenkins had for Wonder Woman 3 is correct. However, James Gunn and the studio were willing to let Patty Jenkins have another go at another script or rewrite some things based on the notes they gave her and Patty Jenkins said, I'll f 
fucking out of here, bro. I don't know if that's the exact quote, but that's what I like to think it was. So to me, it doesn't sound like Wonder Woman 3 could not happen. It just means right now they're starting from scratch, gonna get a whole new creative team behind it, and that could be something good. A lot of people did not like the last Wonder Woman movie. As long as we get another one, I'm happy for that. So that's the clarification we got there. Then Deadline here doubles down on the Man of Steel 2 not looking to be happening because it was an active development, but the studio was not happy with the pitches or the ideas being thrown at them. And right now it's in the hands of James Gunn and Peter Safran to hear a better pitch or even decide if they want to move forward. So yeah, as of right now, Henry Cavill or Superman, still not looking likely. This is then where James Gunn finally took to Twitter to kind of answer some of this stuff going on as he likes to do. He doesn't like to keep the fans in the dark. So that's one thing I do like about James Gunn. And it's a pretty lengthy reply, so I'll leave it to yourself if you want to go off and read it. But just the key things I want to read off from his response. So as for the story yesterday in The Hollywood Reporter, some of it is true. Some of it is half true and some of it is not true. And some of it we haven't decided yet whether it's true or not really keeping us in the dark on what is going on then further down in this thread saying we know we're not going to make every single person happy every step of the way but we can promise everything we have done is in service of the story and in service of the DC characters we know you cherish and we have cherished our whole lives then ending it off with saying the fans need to be patient they will get the answers soon but as of right now things are still working behind the scenes to me what this really does sound like is maybe they're not rebooting the DCU. That's what we were kind of getting when the articles first came out of all these cancelled sequels and things not moving forward but now it really looks like we could have another regime that is willing to build off what is already established. That then brings us into one DC movie we didn't even know was on the table and now that it's swept out of our feet, I'm heartbroken. Kind of. So first, out of nowhere, after all these articles were coming out, it was being said that a solo Michael Keaton Batman movie was in the works to be happening after The Flash. It would be set in the new DCEU that The Flash would set up, and already you had fans all over the place, because one, some people don't like the idea of Michael Keaton getting his own Batman movie. I completely understand that, especially with the whole Ben Affleck connotation and him kind of replacing him in the DCEU, but I still have that bias towards Michael Keaton's Batman because like I said he's he was my first Batman man I grew up watching his movies I see him as the knight and I wouldn't have been against an older grungier version of his Batman even if it was set in this messed up DCU with Wonder Woman Aquaman Shazam all of them out there when I feel like that just doesn't fit with Tim Burton's Batman. But then it got further clarified. So the original source about this Michael Keaton Batman movie was coming from Jeff Snyder. And then The Wrap, an official outlet, added to the story saying, yep, we knew about this solo movie and it was going to be a Batman Beyond movie. A freaking Batman Beyond movie was on the tip of our green little thumbs and it's gone. I have been dying for a Batman Beyond movie to happen on the big screen, and one of my biggest fan casts was having Michael Keane as the old Bruce Wayne, who goes on to teach Terry McGinnis the new Batman, and it's set in this Tim Burton future with huge skyscrapers, you know, flying cars, all these futuristic villains. And then that's when I came back down in reality and realized... Yeah, the, this Batman Beyond movie would not have been the Batman Beyond movie I would have wished. Because this movie would have then been Batman Beyond, but set in present day DCEU, which is essentially our current time. You would have Michael Keaton as the old gruff Batman teaching a Terry McGinnis how to be a Batman. But it would lose that entire aesthetic that made Batman Beyond well beyond set in the future with future versions of DC character villains. So you know what, as devastated as I actually was to hear a Batman Beyond movie was canceled, I think it turned out to be a good thing because I would have been disappointed with this version of Batman Beyond. So now I'm hopeful that whatever James Gunn is planning, Maybe he can do a Batman Beyond movie the right way, set in the future, even if it's not with Michael Keane's Batman. This is where I throw it off to you guys with all these updates on the DC Universe, from Batman Beyond to what movies are canceled, what's not canceled, James Gunn's comments. What do you make of it all? What do you think will be happening? Curious to hear from you guys. Leave it down below. But that is all movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to stick around for my review of the Grinch horror parody movie. As always, I love your guys' faces. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Grinchy, Audi Wowdy.